Two years ago, I made this video. A quick pros and cons of the Behringer TD3, a very mini review. Now, two years on, I'm going to do an even quicker pros and cons of basically what I think of it now. If you can't be bothered to watch this, which I understand, I'd basically say it sounds amazing and it, it's even cheaper than it was back then. If you're thinking of getting one, I'd just go ahead and do it because chances are you'll have a great time with it. Two years ago, when I had the red unit, this is what I said. It feels cheap, it's clicky buttons, I had issues with one of the buttons always doing double press, the distortion levels, the 80s workflow, and a no midpoint, like a notch on the tune knob, which I would have liked so I can just click back to the middle tuning point. And most of the comments people said was, oh, you're just describing an original 303, and I get that. Um, the pros were, again, it's cheap. I keep going about it's cheap because it's pretty um, crazily cheap, really. It sounds great because it does just sound like an original 303. It's got that sound. If you want it, just get one. It's fun. It connects with the gear. There's a Behringer app and there's distortion, which wasn't on the original, and Behringer just added in a distortion. Some of those things have jumped around. Cons, the distortion is very average. It's hard to really call it a con, but it's... It's a very average sounding distortion and there are issues with the volume level and so on. The Synth Tool app, which again, that used to be a pro, is continuously broken. There's been different things wrong with it, but you don't need to use it. So again, how much of a con it really is, isn't such a big issue because to be honest, I don't use it anymore. And also, the, again, I would like the notch on the tune and tempo knobs, but most people would just say the original doesn't have it, so shut up. Um, but now for the pros, it still sounds amazing, two years on. I've now got this yellow unit, I sold the red one. And I don't know if it's in my head, but this yellow one seems to sound better. Behringer do have a track record for updating and tweaking their products. But it might just be in my head because it's yellow, it's got the smiley face on it. But to me it sounds better, and I don't have any of the issues with the double clicking buttons on this one. Again, the price is another plus point. And another pro, which I really like now, which I didn't back then, is the workflow. I criticised the original 80s workflow for being thinking Behringer could have come up with something a bit more modern. But, um, and I got a lot of people saying, you millennials, so on, you don't know what it was like, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, back now, once you, once you actually learn how to use the unit, it's actually very rewarding and great fun. So, a lot of these things I put as cons, such as, you know, the app and so on, they're pretty irrelevant. So, if you're still listening, two years on, I think it sounds even better than it did back then. I'm enjoying it even more. And it's even cheaper. So when you've got a product when all the cons aren't really cons because um, I'd just go for it. If you're on the fence, you'll, you'll have great fun with this thing and everyone knows the sort of sounds it can make. So what are you waiting for? I basically said that a piece of kit that everyone knows is great is great. It just happens to be this one's made by Behringer and it's ridiculously cheap. Yeah.